Cambridge is a particular place because it has, uh, historically speaking, an interesting geography. There are all these greens, and there's the river. And along the river and, and through the greens, there is a protected space where cars do not go. And, and that is a space which the cyclists and the pedestrians have, sh have been sharing quite successfully. They're constantly coming far too near cyclists. Far too near. I suppose the big one is, and I do understand it, is uh, people cycling on the pavement. Um, and I think the argument goes that the roads are dangerous. So I'll cycle on the pavement. And there are different modes of transport on the road. There are pedestrians and there are cyclists and there are cars. And, and they share the road, they share the common space. And there are conflicts. The pedestrians feel that the cyclists are coming too fast and too close and without acoustic warning, and they're upset about that if a cyclist rides on the pavement. And the cyclists are upset about some of the drivers who they feel sometimes um, lay claim to the road in a manner which is inappropriate and kind of marginalizes the cyclist. I mean, all forms of transport are equally valid in my mind. Um, different, different mixes in different areas are obviously more appropriate. And in Cambridge, it's somewhere that cycling needs to be a big part of the mix because the city basically just can't handle the amount of cars that people want to want to put on the roads you know and from an environmental perspective social health perspective all these e economic perspective all these things it's better to reduce the amount of cars on the road if possible but you, you have to acknowledge that there is a, a time and a place where a car is necessary as well my wife um asked me recently, have you ever had a dangerous situation? And we sometimes joke about this. And I, I was thinking about it, and I have to say, I did not. I have sometimes situations where my own assertiveness on the road, that is the way I will claim a certain amount of space on the road, where my own, own assertiveness of the road will find will be disapproved by other road users. So I will have a bus driver or taxi driver or car driver behind me who may want to overtake me, but I find it's a little bit tight there to overtake right there and that he could maybe wait a little bit and I'm not moving to the side because I can't control my bike so well in a narrow space. So I stay in front of the vehicle. And in that situation, I, have, I, I, I attract a little bit of anger or aggression, but I stay safe, I stay very safe. I often find that people, cyclists who are running red lights will either be the extremely confident kind that are just going to bomb through the lights and they're out of the junction before they have a chance to cause, to cause an accident, thankfully, or people who just sort of turn around the corner and don't really get in anyone's way. Very rarely have I seen a cyclist going through red lights um, who has actually almost hit a car or almost been hit by a car. I don't see that very often to be honest. Because I think it's, a, it's got to the point where, where cyclists are doing it to save their own lives. I mean, it's always pre presented as if cyclists are on some sort of kamikaze mission to exterminate themselves. And it may look dangerous, but in fact, the only sensible thing, take a junction like Magdalen Street and Northampton Street, is to go against the red light. What should happen is to have a left filter green light just for cyclists yeah. to allow them to go ahead. I mean, you don't want to die a hideous death being crushed by a bus just so that you can placate some irate person in the Cambridge Evening News who's got a thing about cyclists. There's, there's quite a lot of instances where, I mean, just this morning, for example, I was cycling back and a uh, um, 4x4 went bombing up Gilbert Road and went through red lights actually and literally just cut into the cycle lane not far in front of me. To, to swing around a racing line and I mean I could tell you stories of almost being hit by cars pulling out buses running into cycle lanes and these sorts of things. I'm sure you've had this experience where you're cycling along somebody drives past you very close to you very dangerously they hurtle onto the lights and then you catch up with them at the lights and then if you're sensible turn the lights before they do. So if I'm cycling I can pull up to a junction a traffic light junction um, have five cyclists around and one goes through the lights and that's the person that people remember 
just like if you're riding along the road or walking along the road on a bus and the car comes bombing past you at twice the speed limit, that's the one you remember as well. So that you create these stereotypes and then you don't no longer see the person either on the bike or in the car or on the pavement and and you see a representative of a class and then you start hating them and that's really where the problems begin the press the media they do like these hate campaigns and they like to put it for, for, for to, to, to put it to a point and, and like to speak about the war on our streets but what they should really do the press is remind us that this is not um, we are not modes of traffic we are people I think everybody needs to take a bit of a step backwards and um, I see some good cycling and some good driving and I see some horrendous cycling and some horrendous um, driving and I think uh, yeah everybody should uh, Try and stop blaming everybody else and uh, start to see what they, they might change. But there are also times where I think increased confidence among some of these cyclists would help as well. I mean, I've seen people who pull off what they don't realise are actually quite dangerous manoeuvres because they're not confident enough to get in the way of traffic, you know. Sometimes sometimes it's too... When the traffic lane's not wide enough for a cyclist and a car to sit next to each other, People are hugging the curb so much that it's kind of invite car, invites cars to try their luck. Sometimes you've got to have the confidence to just sort of say, no, you, you can wait for me, which I know doesn't make drivers happy, but any more than it does them sitting behind a car that's doing the same speed. Be understanding that a lot of cyclists don't drive, a lot of cyclists too young to drive, um, Try and give them, try and give them extra space, and and you know if if in doubt, just take your foot off the accelerator and and let the bike get out of the way. The chances are is that the cyclist may make a mistake. I cycle like I drive, you know, because I'm well familiar with the highway code, and I I, I act as if I'm in a car, and I find that's the best way. But there are a lot of cyclists who don't know. How, how a car operates effectively, which means it's harder to anticipate what cars are going to do at junctions and these sorts of things. So having that sort of information available in a way that makes people feel comfortable using it as opposed to sounding like condescending, almost like lessened in how to cycle, I think that would be a valuable thing, yes. You know, you have this guy honk behind you, all right. The only one you need to fear is the one who doesn't see you. you know? The one who honks behind you, he will never touch you. He will be perfectly okay. He will be a little bit angry, but he, he will not pose a danger. I mean, by the token that all cyclists should be lit up like Christmas trees, you could say, well, all pedestrians should also be wearing high-vis jackets and helmets in case they might get hit by um, and you say, oh, don't be ridiculous. But that's basically what you're saying. I think the answer is, again, back in the realm of the motorist who has to just drive more slowly, look more carefully. And if somebody does appear very, very quickly in front of you, well, you have to be going at the right speed to stop. And in most cases, that, is, that does work. Many people think that cycling is easy. You know, I can, I can pedal, I move forward, it's easy, I'm not falling off. And that sense of ease and that sense of, of is, is mistaken because what you really need to understand is how to, how to act in traffic, how to move in traffic, how to interact with the traffic. And the, the, what makes, what exposes cyclists to oftentimes to dangerous situations and involves them in dangerous situations is that kind of gut feeling fear that they have. They have the fear of traffic, then they go to the side of the street and they ride along the parked cars and then they allow cars to overtake them at high speed because they move far to the side of the road and then and then well, it doesn't look so good. You know. Altogether, you know, cycling is not dangerous. It is not dangerous. People say cycling will add years to your life and not to take years away from your life. You know, cycling is a good idea. <laughs>